Good evening, everyone. I'm Charlotte, co-creator of Evolve, a new online arts platform. And on behalf of the entire team, welcome to the Vov's workshop with Nottingham Contemporary. Today, we're in for a real treat, delving into themes of melancholy, heritage, and other ways of living, taking inspiration from Linda's The House of Fame exhibition, which you can explore now on the Vov. For season one, the Vov has invited 15 of the UK leading museums and public art galleries to revive seminal exhibitions from their archives, revisiting these shows virtually in high definition for the first time since their original showcase, unearthing behind the scenes content and facilitating innovative and dynamic events live and on demand. To find out more, keep watching or head to our website, which has been pasted in the chat below. And just some housekeeping before we begin, please note that Zoom slightly reduces the quality of depiction. So do go and discover the exhibition on your own after the event. And for those of you who would like it, this talk also has an automated transcript, which you can find at the bottom of the Zoom screen by clicking on the subtitle button. I am joined this evening by artists Charlotte and Jill from Nottingham Contemporary, and we all warmly welcome you to this hour long session. And I'll hand over to them now. Thank you. Thanks, Lottie. Hi, everyone. My name's Charlotte, and I'm an artist um, based at Nottingham Contemporary. Um, my practice investigates the role of legacies and uh, our attachment to inanimate objects. And I'm really excited to be here um, because the House of Fame, um, when it was here, was the first exhibition we scanned and documented in VR. And since then, all of our exhibitions um, we've translated into virtual reality. And um, in the last over the last year, we've really been committed to translating our resources and um, school activities and learning notes, um, uh, uh, making them accessible um, and complement the RVR exhibitions so schools can make Nottingham Contemporary their classroom. Hi, I'm, I'm Gillian. I'm a sculptor and my practice um, is, is about constructing works that address contemporary concerns about the language and significance of objects. And when Lin the Linda exhibition was in the gallery, I remember a particular workshop where we have a group of um, women with multiple and complex needs who come to us on a weekly basis for 10 weeks. And we worked with this exhibition and we had a, a really lovely session in the gallery where we responded directly to the artwork by Judy Blame. And each person in the group made a little um, accessory to give to one of the others in the group and it was a really nice sharing moment which we did directly in the gallery space. Mm. Um, we have a, uh, a kind of a warm-up activity um, to, to kick off this evening's um, event uh, and we invite you to use the chat function uh, here in the in the zoom room. Um, uh, we work in a participatory way here um, at the gallery like Jill said we um, we work in the galleries with participants and with our audiences and we work in a socially uh, engaged way with um, with participants um, so uh, to, to start with I have a couple of questions um, to ask and yeah feel free to use the chat to respond so the first question um, links with the theme of the house, so the Linda's exhibition called the house of fame with each gallery um, titled The House of Rest, The House of Unrest, etc. So we want to know which part of your house uh, you're in right now. Um, uh, so the first question is, uh, where are you? Um, are you in your living room? Are you in your office? Are you not in your house? Are you somewhere else? Uh, so feel free to use the chat to share um, where you are. The second question, <laughs> brilliant, thanks for the responses. Um, the second question is, we asked you to gather some uh, belongings, some possessions from around your home. We're going to be using these um, uh, in our activities, um, like, like a ready-made. Um, and so our next question is about the possessions you have. Um, can you uh, describe one of your objects that you have in three words? So again, feel free to use the chat to share um, an object. 
that you have. It could be something you can see in your periphery um, outside of the screen or that you might have in front of you ready for the activities. So describing an object in three words. <laughs> <laughs> There's some great responses. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, uh, one more question. Um, where, like I mentioned, my practice, um, I'm really interested in our attachment to objects. And that's also what we're going to be thinking about this evening as well. So uh, to describe what, uh, what one of your objects invokes in you, um, the themes that we'll be looking at this evening include melancholy, um, Future, there's futuristic themes in um, in Linda's show. Um, does one of your objects invoke happy memories? So um, to share a, an emotional attachment that you may have to one of your possessions. <laughs> These are brilliant. <laughs> yeah, nostalgia is a, a good one. Great. And um, so we're going to head into the show now. We're going to access the VR and have a look around. Um, so here we are in the VR. And the first artwork we're going to look at is Linda's Pretty Girl series, which is here on the wall with all of these collages that she created in 1977. And if we, if we zoom in on a few of them, we can see. Black and white image with a color appliance. Um, so yeah, again, I'm, inv I'm inviting everyone to use the chat to uh, communicate what you can see right now in these images. So what can you see? Does everyone hope? Freedom. Jill, what can you see in them? Um, well, I, I can see that, um, the the objects that Linda's used as to to cover her face and the part of the car, the um, the collage. They're very they probably at the time they were made were very modern and very um, of the moment, and they seem kind of quite retro now, quite dated. And the whole pictures seem very sort of um, of the past, even though. They were they were made less than fifty years ago, and how technology's moved on, and how our our sense of ourselves through the objects that we own has changed since um, nineteen seventy seven. And I think that's quite stark the way we present ourselves through our the things that we um, own and how technology has moved on. Yeah, there's some great comments in the chat. Someone um, mentioned everyday technology. There's something about the everyday. With mm -hmm. these, the, the familiarity with the objects that um, Linda's collaged, um, and someone else has mentioned pride, um, which is which is uh, yeah, I can see that with some of the poses that the the female. Well, they were quite revolutionary photos at the time because they were showing women uh, or herself as a woman. Hood was she a possession or was she? Was she say, talking about how she wasn't a possession and how her body should not be seen as a possession by juxtaposing it with these very obvious desirable consumables? Yeah, and that, that's the theme of our first uh, encounter of, of this first activity is possession. So um, we're looking at these images and yeah, the, these photo montages, they, they do have a, uh, as someone mentioned in the chat, a Richard Hamilton um, feel to them. And, uh, and also, yeah, that we're seeing them in VR. So these are, um, we're seeing them in a real, um, like you've said, yeah, cutting edge technology. Um, mm -hmm. And they're a real um, simplistic kind of age old way of, of working, which literally cutting and pasting, literally cutting and pasting um, together. 
um, and also the, 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 the juxtaposition, so this colourful image that's been taken from a magazine of binoculars or a hoover um, with the contrast of a, a black and white um, um, image of a, of a woman from a, of 1970s porn of a and uh, and actually in VR what uh, with with this exhibition there's been it's a selection of of the house of fame so it's it's a cutting and pasting again of um, artworks to create this new narrative this new show mm -hmm. um, which has been done with Linda hasn't it I think she's selected the works for this yeah. show from the original house of fame exhibition which had many many more works and had four large galleries of work yeah does do these um what do these collages remind you of uh, again use uh, everyone here to use the chat to share if they are reminis reminiscent of something from from the 70s or from now I like the everyday and the shocking. It's about those those juxtapositions, how yeah. they make us re-see things because they're put together in a new and a surprising or shocking way. And the snapshot of colour as well, the, that you're drawn to the, the kitchen appliance, you're drawn to the domesticity of the, the object. Um, and then there's obviously the allure of, of, of the naked female body. So it's like, oh, the... The woman having these two only these two roles it um would it be a good idea to compare them to some other pictures of women charlotte that we that are in the exhibition yeah let's go to the uh, another artwork uh still on with our theme um of possession which is um around the yeah around the, around the side we've got a slideshow of images of women in a very different way so this is yeah a real contrast with the pretty girl series and in the in the exhibition when it was here this was projected quite high up onto onto the wall in the house of rest and show yeah women in this state again feel uh, feel free to use the chat to share what you can see um what these images remind you of what you think's going on in these photographs, if you've seen anything like this before. Yeah, yeah, someone's mentioned, yeah, ectoplasm, that's what the... So the House of Rest was one of the galleries in the exhibition and it was all, it was, its theme was really about melancholy and death and looked a lot because Linda had done a residency at Chatsworth House in Derbyshire. She'd looked into the kind of the past and how people used um, um, death as a, express their feelings about death. And there were um, face casts of, and other sort of ways that Victorians um, represented death in a way, way very different to how we do today, much more kind of, visceral and um, really taking on board the idea of death rather than sort of pretending that it was just a passing away. Mm, yeah. It was, yeah, looking at how we, how we manage the, the idea of death or how we, we're unable to manage it, how we comprehend death and how, um, and looking at memorabilia and memento mores. There was lots of um, artifacts and items in these glass vitrines that from Chatsworth House that showed how um, in the, over its 500 year history, how different uh, over the centuries, how they've contemplated or come to terms with um, the, the death of someone. Um, and yeah, these, these images show women that possessed um, with this mm. spiritual kind of um, energy spilling out from them. And, um, and I remember um, when it was here, Linda saying how for her, it was also the, the use of photography. So these were taken 
at a time when cameras and photography were really were cutting edge technology for their time and it's that the camera was able to capture something that's meant to be fleeting this um kind of yeah this this ectoplasm that would leak out of somebody's face or or a ghost so some of these yeah are in, imply that there's this kind of spiritual ghost-like figure hovering around and that the camera is the the camera is is able to capture this and um, document it and that photography during this period became a way of seeing like it hadn't before and that's that's also something that runs throughout um the show as well obviously with Linda's self-portraits the photography and there was something as well Jill you mentioned that Linda had said about growing up with photography yeah she said her mother had said to her she came from quite a working class background and her mother said oh people don't photog photograph people like us we're, we're not we're not the kind of people that have photographs and then Linda became obsessed with photography as a result of this and became a very large mm. part of her practice throughout her has been throughout her life yeah so it's like the the camera for Linda and also for these women is a way of it's a it's a witness to a physical reality mm -hmm. um so yeah so so with possession um we have uh, an activity for yes. all to do uh which is to uh yes Jill you're going to share what it is <laughs> so I'm going to ask you to take the uh one of some of your possessions that you've collected around you it could be something that just happens to be in front of you or something you've specifically chosen for this workshop and see if you can balance it in an unusual position that reveals something usually unseen about it and then um, you could maybe take a photograph of it and share it with us on um, social media or you email it and then we may your images and see what you've been what you've been photographing mm. so how you look at something can completely change depending on the position that it's in and how you present it and things can take on completely different meaning or you can see things that you've never noticed before if you balance them or change their position so it's a little um little task for you there And we're excited to see what you come up with, mm. especially having seen the list of um, the descriptions of some of the possessions you've got around you. This, this could be quite interesting. Yeah, there's. Um, yeah, the words that uh, you guys had mentioned at the start around um, sentimental memories, protection, frustration yellowing um scalloped pink bubbles i wonder what that's going to look like in an unusual position yeah box stuff suffocating mm. yeah doggy eye drops a pinch pot yeah these are great mm -hmm. so yeah to to arrange your objects in a in a way that maybe they're not used to you, you you're not expecting them to be um so the next our next encounter mm -hmm. so we're going to move into the first sort of gallery space of, of the um, exhibition and um, get around the corner. And there's two works that sort of put next to each other. The first one is by um, Peter and Alison Smithson, The House of Future. And this time our th we're looking at the idea of position and how that affects how we see objects. So when this work was um, shown at Nottingham Contemporary, it was blown up into a picture that completely, it was like a sort of wallpaper over the whole end wall of one of the galleries. And so it was almost like you felt that you could walk into this space, this space of the future, except for it was made in 1956 for the Daily Mail Ideal Home Exhibition. 
And I, I remember the, the, the uh, ideal home exhibition being something that used to be a, like a news item about the crazy things that we were going to be living with in the future. And it's kind of interesting to, I have this idea of what the future, trying to, I think, imagine what the future might bring, but also looking at things now that were considered modern then, and they still have a sense of modernity about them now. So are there anything that you have that you um, see as being modern, but in fact is over 50 years old? Are there things that you own or things that you have in your house that are considered modern, but um, in fact are, you know, older than yourself or older than, older than, um, what we would consider modern now and how, how do we move from modern life to contemporary life? What is the difference between the modern world and the contemporary world? So if you want to share in the chat anything about um, objects that you own and your, your um, ideas about what is modernity. There's a great, there's a great response. Someone said me. <laughs> 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 and then uh, Someone is brilliant, is, is being taking photos and sending them to us. That's great, thank you. Yeah, do keep sending sending us images of your um, positioning of your uh, domestic, household, worldly possessions, the, the objects you've chosen around you to present them in a, in a different and new way um, and how they're so Balanced. this photograph is quite minimal and then if you look at it if you come out of the photograph and see it next to the um rug that of, of linda's which made in 2014 so they're sort of positioned next to each other in the exhibition this rug itself when it was at the gallery in Nottingham contemporary was actually laid horizontally on a kind of low plinth and so it had a very different perspective and when I seeing it here vertically hung on the wall, the the face, Linda's face seems very seems distorted in a different way to when we we saw it standing up and looking over it. And it's how interesting how things change just depending on your perspective of them and how you see them. And that, is this modern? Is this contemporary? How how? how does this compare to the uh, modern house is is this something that would have fitted in that modern house is it is is this something that we would have in our homes today or does it still have some kind of retro vintage feel about it any um is it linda somebody's put it's it jackie kennedy <laughs> and the, the 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 rug is called linda armor it's, it's made of himalayan wool and um and silk mm. so it's got a luxurious item mm. and it, it does check its position really does change it it's mm. more of a tapestry feel to it than before when it was a when it was a rug when it was presented here but it's also quite interesting because now it's hung on the wall it is definitely an image well when if you imagine it as a carpet it might have been something that you would have walked across which gives yeah. it a very different um idea of walking across somebody's face and so that um change the position of it changes very much its meaning and its impact on yeah. how we respond to it and it is the juxtaposition again of, of these two placed next to each other in, in the same as they were when House of Fame was here, how the rug was laid in front of the kind of the huge, this, this um, uh, house of the future kind of blown up that it invoked that, yeah, homely feel to it. Um, and the house of the future seems very empty, seems yeah. very clinical, there's, there's nobody there's nobody in the image. There's no sense of um, personal touch. There's no obvious sort of collection of objects or possessions that we all have in our homes. And this idea of the, of the modern world where we live in this sort of clinical um, space with minimal um, artifacts around us that seems to be an, a, a big theme in that kind of modernism. And yet, most people do seem to have lots of um, lots of 
objects that they've gathered through their lives around their homes mm. actually yeah that that's a good question to ask everybody how would you describe if you had to describe your home in three words how would you describe it um with regards to the objects and possessions that are within it does does your home have a <laughs> someone's put a working project <laughs> that's brilliant do, do you do does the people feel that your home is more on this house of the future style where it's um minimal and um kind of stripped to its essentials or do, does your home fall in the other side of the spectrum do you have lots of possessions in front of you to work with <laughs> comfy lived in yeah what is the opposite of minimal maximal, <laughs> maximal. <laughs> Clutter, cluttered, that be the opposite of minimal. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, you see right. house makeover programs on the telly and they take everything out and then replace all the possessions with new things that fit a theme. It absolutely horrifies me because I feel like, but then I'd have to give away all those things that I've collected, I've been given, that I have um, have some kind of connection with some person or some time and you that kind of idea of design where you strip everything away and go back to nothing seems seems to be a almost inhuman because we all collect and have our identity held in our homes yeah yeah which has changed quite a lot over the last year or so because we've been in our homes so much more than we have we were in the um when we were all out yeah, mixing, going yeah. to work, etc. Homes have taken on different meaning, and 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 it was great that people that um that had been picked up at the start of the chat when I was asking what room in your home you were in, and there's that living room slash office or office slash bedroom where our, our homes now are can uh, um have, have changed. Our, our each each living space is is completely different with. Uh, with, with what's happened the last we've year. got an immersive star with immersive with star projectors and mood lighting home here that sounds like a great fun place to live yeah yeah well, somebody said that their house is not, is rented and not theirs but i'm sure you still have things you bring things into it to personalize it to and to give it that um um element of your own personal identity yeah which every home has you you walk into it into a home and into or a house or a room and you'll you uh, you could be able to i think that's interesting i wanted an extension the architect came around and said some people think they need an extension but all they need is a good tidy up <laughs> i think that architects don't like things they just like buildings they don't want to see things cluttering up their buildings do they they want to see it all um they just want to see the um the bones of the structure <laughs> yeah it's it is it's it's true though isn't it that that you know you uh you think you need more storage so you buy more storage boxes and then all you do is just fill them with more stuff <laughs> <That's> what... <laughs> so we have yeah our next activity linked to these um two artworks is um and this this idea of positioning and there's overlaps obviously with what with the first creative activity about balancing there's as as with making art there's always an overlap with themes and um and and the actions we're um so we'd like you now using the same objects that you have um is to consider the materials that they're made from so to be feeling them and considering what they feel like what they're made from their material and to create a, a collage of them a, a still life essentially so to rearrange them um, in a way where these materials um, contrast each other so it may be that you, some of your objects you have in front of you are rough or wooden and some of your objects may be ceramic or some of your um, objects may have fabric um, uh, as part of them. And so it's to arrange them in a way where you're presenting them based on, on their material and what they feel like. 
and perhaps creating some kind of idea of a value system for those materials, some kind of order. Yeah. How would you value them in relation to their actual material? Yeah. Not necessarily in monetary terms, but you know, what value system would you impose upon them? Yeah. Especially with if some of your objects, if for example with ceramics, there's something more fragile about those. So does that mean that they're valued more because there's a more of a preciousness to them? Or is it that actually some of the ceramics you have have got chips in them and, and have or have been glued back together? So actually they're they that thwarts the value system of them. So well, really, ceramicists, ceramicists like it when people break their pots because then they have to go and buy another one. <laughs> yeah, materials defined by their yes um, mat materiality. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So that's here yeah, a creative prompt we have for you. So what about materiality in the 21st century where we where we are losing materiality and we're here we are in in the virtual world rather than in the material world yeah the art world the artworks through a through a screen rather than actually physically walking into the gallery yeah interesting um we're seeing things that yeah that are 3d and a in a flat 2d mm. but also 3d mm-hmm Mm. So another collage that we'd be interested in you making would be something, a collage of our possessions that either reveals or subverts their function. Something that um, changes what, they, what their purpose is, what, how, or what you think of them, what they do. How can you subvert them? Maybe it's by putting several together in a way that stops them being what they normally are. Mm. Or reveals what they are, shows their purpose. So it's here, using the same objects mm -hmm. and then categorizing them in a different way and arranging them in a different way so that, then, that there's a different meaning coming from them in the same way that Linda has when she convened this show, the, the placement of, of objects, including her own and from Chatsworth and from other artists and how they um their so for example this rug you know the, the function of a rug is being completely altered because it's now hanging on the wall um the function of this rug when it was when it was here in the house of fame um was on the floor but there was a barrier around it so its function had also been altered when it entered the gallery space um and um and that's something obviously with when, a, when an, an object that's presented as art enters uh, an exhibition space, how its function automatically changes um, mm. into something different and, and our relationship with it changes as a spectator, as a viewer in how we, in how we view it. Um, well, often people come in the gallery and they look at an artwork and they say, well, I wouldn't want that in my house. And I say to them, well, no, neither would I possibly. It might be disturbing or disruptive or, or um, something that you couldn't actually imagine looking at every day, but that doesn't mean I don't want to see it. And that's where art galleries are so important because we get to see those subversive artworks that artists make, which we wouldn't want to live with, but we, we still need to see and we still need to experience. And that's why art galleries are so important. Yeah, someone's asked again about why um... With the house of fame and why it's called the house of fame in the why why that's the name of the um the show uh it was so in the in in the original exhibition well as as in this one it's a collection of artworks from uh well from yeah, the 1600s because it includes um objects and artifacts from chatsworth house and it, it's and also Linda um, worked a lot with musicians and um, one of her collages was on the front cover of a Buzzcocks um, album a record sleeve and um, so the House of Fame it draws on the the sources of influence and the collaborations that Linda had had but also um, the, the in, inspirations that we that we get from different artworks from different objects this um, uh, and and then and then that's how that's presented. 
And I think also that the way she photographs herself and she has become a, a symbol of fame when she started out um, just as a, a she, she started out just as like a graphic designer producing like collages and then they became famous and world seen worldwide on record covers and other and in magazines. And so she 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 never expected to 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 transition from being somebody you know like a jobbing um, graphic designer with a very specific vision to being somebody that was the the face of a certain era. Mm. And also she was in, involved heavily with the punk scene, which is obviously a, a subculture. It's, it's it's underground, so the you you don't want to be famous if you're. A punk you're you're anti-famous um and, and you know anti-celebrity so it's also um yeah a comment on on that as well so we've got one final collage for you to do do you want to yeah drive that charlotte yeah we um so yeah using the same possessions using the same objects um and thinking about the 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 like as Jill mentioned, the value that you place on them, but yeah, the real sentimental attachment that you have with these objects, and your relationship to them, and to curate a, a still life, uh, arrange them in a way that um, demonstrates this. So uh, maybe some objects are pushed forward. Some are in the foreground, some are in the background or the way they're arranged in a particular order that implies some have more importance than others based on, on how much, yeah, how much you care about them, what your relationship is to them. So yeah, we invite you to arrange your objects for a third time to consider their value and to think about as well with the first activity around balancing them so uh, if how you position them how you portray these objects to communicate to express how you feel about them i think how do we define value well that is a kind of a personal um mm. decision yeah. i mean i think value is is a very emotive word it can mean it, it, we, are we talking about monetary value? Are we talking about emotional and sentimental value? Are we talking about value in terms of use and um, functionality? Um, value is something I think is something that um, isn't really um, looked into enough because I think people just think value is about how much something costs and it's, it can be about what it means and what it what it does and how it changes your life and how it um, actually um, affects your relationships. Mm, and it's uh, in the art world, especially, it's very complex because you can take an object that the artist hasn't made and um, as soon as they present it or as soon as it's, it's presented in an exhibition space, its monetary value increases dramatically. Um, and um and so your yeah, value is uh, yeah it's a really complex thing because who is it who's deciding that that object now has a has a net worth that's much more than than what it was um and who uh who is the recipient of that value as well and that what i think is worth something jill might think is not <laughs> And also what what you what you put value on something may be about, you know, how it's meaning and it's and it and what it gives to you more than what it um how much you paid for it. Mm, that's a very good question. Who decides if it's a piece of art? I mean that's that's like asking what's the meaning of life. <laughs> <laughs> I think artists might decide if something's a piece of art, but then their audience might disagree with them. Mm. It's a good question. It's an, it's oh. um. It's good that there isn't there isn't a right. Or There's right. always the thing that well, I'm an artist, so what I if I say it's art, it's art, and it, it, does that hold water? Is that is that something? Is that a, um, a statement that really means anything? Has any value? With 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 sentimental, which obviously is for this for this last activity, is is the the narrative or the 
because because objects are, are sometimes much more than than a tangible physical object they are um they're an idea they're a they're a treasure trove it's 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 when it's that how that inanimate object can animate you or it helps define your identity in who you are. And, and we all do that. We all make choices in what we have in our homes from the colour of our sofa to the ornaments that we have on a mantelpiece. They all communicate to others something about ourselves or, or a version of ourselves or um, what how we want others to see us. and um, and that's really, uh, I, I just find that so fascinating about how, yeah, w- someone could walk into your home and, and, and assume that um, something isn't as old or has, um, is, is as meaningful to you uh, as it is. And someone mentioned before about a, a hat, a family hat that had been upcycled. So again, there's this whole other, like this whole layering of interpretation and meaning where you could have something that's really old and you upcycle it into something that's new, but it's 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 taken on a new life. Um, and that's something that I, I really like with, with with this exhibition where Linda has has chosen objects and positioned them in a way where they the whole exhibition tells a story of you move through, as you move through these rooms, as you move through these houses and um how you the feeling you get in each space is completely different because of the way the lighting is and because of the sounds and because of the 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 way artworks are positioned um and that's exactly what we do in our homes as well um i was wondering if there's a question we could ask you all a little sort of another little activity is to write in the chat is if a, if you had a one of the objects you've got one of your possessions if a friend found it mm. would they know it was yours do you have something that is quintessentially you that mm. people would recognize if they found it in the street would they say that belongs to do you have something like that i'm trying to think if i do Do you, Charlotte? Yeah, I was just thinking then. Yeah, I reckon I've got a couple of textile pieces from... It, it would have to be a very specific friend <laughs> who found one of these very specific textile pieces that I made a while ago. And I definitely know if they saw that in the street, they'd go, that's Charlotte's. Um, I don't think pictures of you and your dog count because of it's obviously <laughs> belongs to you. Yeah, it's, it's it's an object or something without you in it. <laughs> and it, could they work it out? It was yours. I I reckon Jill here. If you left something, I would know it was yours. What if I left something behind at work in the yeah. garden? Yeah, yeah, because it'd probably be some kind of heavy tool or piece of big <laughs> pile of materials or something. Because that's what I'm all about: materiality and be a lump of concrete. Fun Making of concrete. stuff. Yeah, <laughs> so. a lump of concrete in the office. I'd be like, I know who that is. Well, that's interesting. People can always tell the puppets I've made as they have my attitude. Mm, yeah, how you, you bring in yourself, art mimicking life. Yeah, art into your own work. Yeah. But it's also the thing about with a woman artist, how women's art um, can be described as feminine, even, even if the woman who's making it never actually... Um, set out to do that does that happen or you know I make work in quite a male sort of environment of making steel sculpture with with welding and I cast lumps of concrete and use pieces of wood but somehow people say but your work still looks like it's feminine and I'm not sure what I feel about that yeah um I don't it's not it's like I can't help it (laughs) hmm So we were going to finish off with some questions, weren't we, to round up the session. Yeah. So if you could again write your comments in the in the chat. Oh, we've got some images. Is it possible to see any images of the um, things that people have sent in at all? 
be nice to see some of the um, collages that people have made. I don't know if that's right. possible. Yeah, we've got them on our um, on our. Uh, they've come through. Let's have a look at these. Oh wow! <laughs> have you got have you got some images there, Charlotte? Yeah, they're really they're they're good. Had, oh, okay. All oh, right, have we been? Yeah. They're, they're really they, these are brilliant using what's around you and, and um, position, positioning oh. them in, in a way that tell um, that communicate an idea. There's Where, some eyeballs. There's a whole load of eyeballs with the doggy eye drops. That is. Yeah. That's great. That's, yeah. That's I, very interesting juxtapositions. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, really great to see some some images and, and also for the uh, your responses in the chat as well. Like, um, mm -hmm. oops, some more come through seeing and and responding to to your responses um from in this exhibition as well is it possible to screen share some of these images objects and seeming frustrating yeah. come out of the exhibition and screen share them oh yeah great that's um That'd be brilliant. Should I do that? Uh, oh yes. Great. Let's um. Here we go. Oh wow. <laughs> 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 That's brilliant. I like the the positioning of the pens is really it's like the horns that solve so on um this show with this show. it's interesting the one's pointing up and one's pointing down as well. What does that mean? Let's uh, let's look at some more. Oh nice. Show my screen. Here we go. I see that one. And the angle, the position of, of the camera of how you've taken the photo. And it's hard to know what, what these objects are um, because of the position they've been taken in. So there's, a, there's an intrigue as well as a viewer of wanting to move, of look around to see, to see what the object is. Definitely an object that's in a, a different position than it's um, normal, you know, how you would normally see it. It's been, its function's been subverted by its position. And then we've got this one. Ooh. These are lovely, so delicate. They really remind me of the memento mori in the, um, you know, in the glass vitrine in the, in the house of unrest but from the Chatsworth, Chatsworth where, there were some amazing artifacts in there, similar to this, these, these uh, real textural um, objects of almost like knickknacks, but are taken on this completely new meaning. And I like on here how they're on, a, on this white fabric background. Mm. Mm. Okay, we've got a couple of questions we'd like to present to you before we finish. So, um... What has the past year revealed about our homes and possessions in, in relation to our identity? What has changed with the fact that we've been sequestered in our homes for much more time than we usually are? Has anything happened in your home to, to, that make your relationship with your home changed? Oops, more images. Yeah, let's show some more images. I'm trying to show this one with the eyes because it's great. Let me show this one. Um, I 
to make the round. Can you see that one? Really good. Mm -hmm. The eyes and the eyes and the... <laughs> That's brilliant. Have you not seen it? Yeah, the eyes are great, aren't they? Yeah. If a little bit um, unsettling. Yeah. But quite Linda. Yeah. There's a... Yeah, you, you, you want to keep looking. You're drawn into it. Mm. Let's look at... Let's see more images here. Yeah, thanks for sending... Mm. Sending these in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's show this one. Here we go. Oh, the Harry bow. The, the balanced Harry bow. Yeah. Preca the precarious Harry bow. What's going to happen next? I don't think they'll stay there for long. So how does one present a narrative with objects instead of words? What, what, how can you use objects as a, as a vocabulary rather than words to present? Yeah. Narrative? Which is what the role of curators have, isn't it, with exhibitions? How do you communicate? How do you tell a story with objects and artworks? I mean, how do you do that in a museum? How do you communicate the, the, a historical moment or uh, a theme um, purely by how you position objects? Um, and, and that we also do that in no, unknowingly in our own homes, even if we feel that we're not positioning things, that there's something about the, maybe the way that we like chuck our keys on the table, that, I mean, that says something about you as a person, doesn't it? In your, in your approach and how you, um, the, the regard or the value that you place to, to items you have, your possessions. Mm. And I think we we're we're all we're sometimes unaware of how much our cultural and personal histories are represented in our homes, even though we think we haven't put our identities upon it. They're, they're often there. Yeah, I think that's a very interesting one. You want to care less about your possessions, but you can't. Yeah, your possessions possess you. Well, I, I had made some work a few years ago called "What Are We Going to Do with All This Stuff." So we, we, we end up um, buying stuff, inheriting stuff, having stuff, finding stuff, collecting stuff. What do we do with it? You know, it becomes, it takes, it can take over your life sometimes. But on the other hand, it all has some kind of meaning, uh, some kind of um, point where you, you can't get rid of it because of it, it contains so many, um, such a narrative of your life or someone else's life. Yeah. I just wanted to pop in and say thank you both so much for this incredible tour. I know that this is a very enjoyable way to spend part of my evening, at least, and I hope that everyone else found the same as well. And just say a huge thank you to Gillian and Charlotte. It's been so, so brilliant having you both on. And I wanted to thank everyone else as well for joining us and thank those of you who have donated so far. It's going to make a huge difference. And as mentioned, the mission of the VOV is to um, raise those donations and distribute them equally amongst all participating institutions to really um, boost the cultural sector in these uncertain times. And I would encourage those of you who haven't yet had the chance to donate, to donate what you are able to. And on that note, I think it's time to wrap up for the evening. So I'll say goodbye from me and wishing you a lovely rest of your evening. <laughs>